Let's talk a little terminology if we can. I'll throw out some terms typically bandied about. And the first one is ABEC class. ABEC class re refers to a standard of tolerances that were established once again in the 20s. Bearing manufacturers got together and said, not only are we going to have a numbering system that's uniform, but we're going to have a set of tolerances. So they're literally saying, standard grade, which is referred to as ABEC 1, will have the following tolerances. So they know that the inner and outer ring and the balls conform to a tolerance that has, goes out to three or four decimal places. An ABEC 3 bearing has tighter tolerances still. Now, when bearings were uh, actually 40, 50 years ago, a standard bearing was an ABEC 1. Now with metallurgy improving and manufacturing techniques, most bearings manufactured worldwide are close to an ABEC 3 bearing. They run quiet and smooth. If someone needs more precision, less, uh, they want less what's called run out where the bearings could wobble a bit, and speed, they go to an ABEC 5 or a machine tool grade which is ABEC 7 or ABEC 9. So these are critical values. One of the important things we stress as a company in terms of sourcing is that people only buy the accuracy they really need. Some people say, well, I only want an ABEC 1 bearing, pay for it because it's less expensive, for an ABEC 7 application. That will lead to failure or poor performance. It also goes the other way. If someone only requires an ABEC 1 or 3 grade bearing, they should not be buying an ABEC 7. The one little anecdotal thing that happens here at our pickup counter, we often have people who are on rollerblades. They'll walk in and say, okay, I want a 608 bearing, which is an 8 millimeter bearing, bore bearing, which is the second most popular bearing in the world. It also goes into every vacuum cleaner motor and mag motor. And they'll walk in off the counter. We have a big student population in this area. They'll say, I want that 608 bearing and I want an ABEX 7. And we look at them and say, you don't need a 7. Oh, but that's what the local skate wheel shop is selling. Well, the fact is an ABEX 7 bearing can turn, let's say, has a limiting speed of, let's say, 80,000 RPM, something crazy like that. Whereas a standard ABEX 3 bearing, which might cost $2 as opposed to the ABEX 7 at $8, will have a 20,000 RPM limit. Also, the bigger factor is once someone steps off a curb, on a rollerblade on an ABEX 7 bearing and they clunk, they hit that raceway, they've put a minor imperceptible to the naked eye bump or a little divot in the raceway and it brings the limiting speed down to 20 or 30,000 RPM anyway. So once again they'd be paying too much for an application that doesn't require that style or expensive bearing. Well, you just saved our inline skaters in the audience a bunch of money, and I'm sure they're thankful for that. Next, can you tell us about internal clearance? Internal clearance is one of the more misunderstood aspects of bearings. It's, it it uh, refers to the amount of displacement a shaft would have in relation to the outer ring. For a bearing to turn, for the ball or roller to turn, you have to have some gap between the balls and rollers and the rings. This is a very tight tolerance. For most applications, for motors and pumps, we call out what's called a C3 clearance. People hear this term internal clearance and they see the letter C and a number after it and they wonder, well, what's that really mean? What it means is that in ascending order, C0, 2, 3, 4, and five and so on, five is unusual, that means there's more clearance between the balls or rollers and the running surfaces. This is really essential to have because what it allows is for a film of lubricant to run through the bearing, it allows heat to be dispersed. If the tolerances aren't proper when you mount the bearing, you're going to get the rings tighten up and take out the clearance. So it's really critical to have the proper life. Also, certain applications run hot. Uh, we do a lot of business with a railroad drive, a traction motor bearing, where it's a C4 clearance by design. 
under initial load when it's turning, it sounds a little clunky. You can actually hear the rollers. But what happens as the bearing heats up, thermal expansion of the metal actually makes it a C2 or C3 clearance, tightens it all up, and it runs smoothly and perfectly. So it's very important to pay a lot of attention to clearance. Too tight a clearance, the bearing will seize. Too loose a clearance, it'll sound like uh, rocks are in the motor. All right, up next, angular contact. Yes, angular contact is that combined load. Some bearings are actually designed in to take angular load as a standard, as opposed to just an infrequent load. Bearings like this would be the 7200 series, which are extremely popular in machine tools and in pumps, where some of the load can be from the side. And it's very important that it be accepted properly. Typically, angular load, especially in angular contact bearings, the 7200 or 7300 series, which are very popular in compressors, are used in pairs so that the load can be from either side. Okay, how about bearing life? Bearing life refers to the number of revolutions a bearing can uh, accomplish under normal fatigue, under normal compressive stress. Most bearings can go a certain amount of revolutions and there's a B10 life where a group of bearings are tested. 90% of a group of bearings can go a certain number of hours.